Hi everyone and welcome to Prague. My name is Valerie and today I'm going to be your guide and together we're going to be exploring the Prague castle. This video is going to be a shorter version of what we normally cover and see on our regular Prague castle tour. So if one day you're traveling to Prague and want to explore the castle more, you can check out the link in our description and find out more about our castle tour. Anyways, what is the first thing you should know about the Prague Castle? It is actually the fact that Prague Castle Complex is the largest castle complex in the world, according to Guinness Book of Records. Yes, it's 45 hectares big. Don't look at me like that, I also don't know how big is 45 hectares, uh, but I know one thing, that one hectare is approximately one football field, so our Prague Castle complex is 45 football fields large. It's, uh, it's huge, guys. Um, and we're actually already in the Prague Castle, even though it doesn't look like it, because we are right now in the Royal Gardens, and they're part of that Prague Castle complex. They're 16th century gardens, and uh, they're very beautiful to walk around and you can even see the building like the ball game house a beautiful renaissance gym you could say and here is the Prague castle actually one question that we get a lot on our Prague castle tour is where is the Prague castle? I don't see it. It doesn't look like a castle to me. I don't know about it, but uh, if we look over there, we can see some defense walls. We can see also the defense tower and the moat, which are pretty typical features of medieval castles. But I get it. From the southern side, Prague Castle looks totally different. It looks more like a lot of pretty buildings together without any fortification system whatsoever there. Uh, the reason for that is the age of the castle. It has been standing here for more than 1000 years and um, through that time it has undergone a lot of changes. Take a look for example at the picture here. This is how Prague Castle looked like in 10th century. Nothing much, uh, just a couple buildings, pretty empty, surrounded by a very simple defense wall. And then the same castle but in 15th century. Well, this looks like a castle. And then in 17th and 18th century, a lot of castles would lose their defensive values. And uh, against the modern means of warfare, new fortresses were appearing, like this one, for example, here. So a lot of old castles, including the Prague Castle here, slowly but surely started to lose their walls and towers until they looked like this. Uh, but let's go and explore the Prague Castle. To enter the Prague Castle, we can use this gate. So uh, for that, we will have to cross the bridge. It's called Powder Bridge after the Powder Tower that you can see over there. So let's come a little bit closer. Powder Tower used to be the storage for gunpowder. Apparently, some of it would get on this bridge and that's how it gained its name. The bridge used to be completely wooden, right now you wouldn't tell uh, because it was reconstructed in 1700s and made of stone. And if we walk all the way down there, we will meet two guys standing on the sides of the entrance of the Prague Castle protecting it. They're called Prague Castle Guards. Somebody's working here. And their job is uh, to protect the Prague Castle uh, and the president who works inside of the castle. Um, so they have to stand still for one hour straight without any movement. And every hour they have uh, the change of the guards. So every hour sharp you can see two more people coming here, two more guards, and switching their positions with them. Oh, it's okay, this gentleman has no intent of leaving, so yeah, we can move a, a little bit over there. 
Um, so yeah, but uh, a lot of people actually ask us about the change of the guards when they research the Prague Castle visit uh, because uh, there is a much bigger change of the guards, more like grandiose, that takes place every day at 12 a.m. Uh, but not here, at a different gate called the Giant's Gate. This is more official entrance to the Prague Castle. It used to be used by kings and uh, even, uh, even uh, people who occupied Prague Castle. I'm sure you can recognize this person over here. Yep, that's Adolf Hitler. Uh, he's entering the Prague Castle after he successfully invaded back then Czechoslovakia. Uh, we actually don't talk much about Second World War on our Prague Castle tour because we have a separate tour for that called the Free Second World War Tour. So yeah, it's pay what you wish tour, pretty cool. You can check it out. We will leave a link to it in our description box. And uh, yeah, enough of uh, uh, selfish <laughs> uh, promotion uh, here. Let's go back to the guards. So let's uh, take a look at what they're wearing. Yeah because uh, their uniforms are very fancy. They were designed by the same designer who worked on the set of the Oscar-winning movie Amadeus uh, about Mozart. So if you haven't seen that movie, make sure to check it out. It won eight Oscars and was even mentioned in Simpsons episode. Um, and uh, yeah, more of these guards come every time uh, there is a change of the guards at 12 a.m. They're all dressed up. There is also the um, the orchestra, military orchestra that comes there and they play military anthems. So yeah, it lasts around 10 minutes uh, and more people come and to look at it. Yeah, so if you also would like to see it, make sure to be there a bit earlier so you can take up this spot because that's the only place where you can actually see properly what's going on. Okay, so let's uh, go and enter the Prague Castle. Okay, so right now we are in the second courtyard of the Prague Castle, but I'm not sure that you guys know where we are exactly. So let's have a look at the map of the Prague Castle over there. The map is kind of small, so hopefully you will be able to see. Okay, here we are. We are here in the second courtyard of the Prague Castle. We used the powder bridge, as you remember, to, uh, to enter the Prague castle uh, because that is actually the most convenient entrance here because uh, it's right next to this tram stop. So it will take you just five minutes to get from the tram stop to where we are now. There is another two entrances, one here and one over there. So when it comes to the Prague Castle, there is uh, two ways generally of how to uh, visit it. There is the freeway. Yeah? You can just come in, kind of how we are doing it right now, and look at everything from the outside. Uh, most of the, the buildings in the Prague Castle are not accessible to general public, like the buildings here, for example. Uh, they're only accessible to the president and people who work for the Czech president. But if you get a ticket, for 250 crowns or 10 euro, uh, you can visit the interiors of the Old Royal Palace, St. George's Basilica, Golden Way, and St. Vitus Cathedral. Uh, this ticket does not include the audio guide, um, and uh, uh, we actually don't know exactly how much the audio guide costs because they keep changing the price every month. But one thing that we know is just for a little bit extra, you can get a real guide like me that will smile at you and make jokes. Uh, on our tour, we visit the interiors of these four buildings uh, and we also, of course, tell you more details about what we can see in the Prague Castle and cool stories. The tour lasts three hours. Uh, believe me, this is uh, the minimum amount that, uh, of hours that you need to explore the Prague Castle because it's very large. Um, in theory, you could get a tent and sleep over and wake up and then visit more things in the Prague Castle. Uh, but we don't do that yeah? because it's a very inconvenient to sleep here. Um, actually, one uh, person at least uh, used to do that and that's Czech president uh, because there was a big uh, tradition of Czech presidents living in the Prague castle. Uh, we can see it actually because on top of the roof there you can see a little flag it's called presidential standard flag. When it's up it means that the Czech president is at work. 
We can also see that uh, currently Czech president doesn't have any guests in the castle because um, usually when somebody arrives from a foreign country, like a politician, they block off the courtyard and they hang the flag of the visiting country here. So currently no guests uh, in the Prague castle and no wonder. Uh, but let's go to our next stop. It's going to be uh, the most exciting stop on our tour because it's going to be about St. Vitus Cathedral. So let's go. So now when we exit, look up. Beautiful, right? This is the Cathedral of St. Vitus, the reason why everybody should visit Prague Castle nowadays. Uh, this is a Gothic cathedral, it was built here in the 14th century, and at the time Prague was the seat of the... Sorry, it's a misbehaving child, we can also film him. It's okay. He'll be fine, don't worry about him. Um, so at the time the cathedral was being built, Prague was living through its golden age. It was the city of the whole, the seat, sorry, of the Holy Roman Empire and its king, Charles IV, the most uh, famous Czech individual um, who grew up in France, decided to spice it up here a little bit and add some proper Gothic to the city. And if you look up, you will see his statue over there. That's him wearing a crown. And right opposite from him is another person uh, called Ernst of Pardubice. He was the Archbishop, the first Archbishop of Prague. So these two statues, they sort of represent two powers, the power of the state and the power of the church. But both of these individuals were present when they laid the first foundation stone of this cathedral in 1344. How long do you think it took us to finish it? Well, it was actually around 600 years, 585 to be exact. Why so long? Uh, we had many breaks uh, un involuntarily <laughs> uh, during the construction of this cathedral and it was finally finished in 1929. But what else happened in 1929? Uh, the crash on uh, Wall Street, the Great Depression and later the beginning of the Second World War and in the case of this country, the beginning of communism. So yeah. Uh, don't blame us uh, for not finishing this cathedral on time. And if you look over there, you can even see some statues are still missing. So let's just say we're still working on it. Okay, let's uh, have a look at something else. We'll go over there. Okay, as you can see, the magical change of the wardrobe happened. We are now in the third courtyard. It's always really windy here, so I had to put my coat on, but it's worth it because if we look over there, we can see the most beautiful view of the St. Vitus Cathedral from the southern side. We can see the main tower here and also the back of the cathedral on the right side, which as you can see, is much, much darker than whatever we uh, saw just a minute ago. That's because the right side of the cathedral is actually the one that was built over uh, uh, or during Middle Ages. And that's where the most important things um, are stored in the cathedral. So as much as the cathedral looks beautiful from the outside, it's even more beautiful uh, from the inside with interiors. That's where you can see, for example, the tomb of Saint uh, Wenceslas or the heaviest silver sarcophagus in Czech Republic. Also, we can see a part of the old royal palace all the way back there. And uh, in the old royal palace, we have, for example, Vladislav Hall, or we have the defenestration room and window. So all of these things that I just mentioned, you are not able to see if you uh, come and visit the Prague castle for free. So that's why we suggest you either get a ticket or join our castle tour and explore everything uh, that we've mentioned now. Okay, uh, but we actually can come a little bit closer to the mosaic over there and uh, have a look at it. So what else can we see on the southern side of the St. Vitus Cathedral? Uh, probably the most beautiful decoration here is the Mosaic of Last Judgment, Czech edition. We can see Jesus Christ there, Virgin Mary, and six patron saints of Czech lands, and finally John the Baptist. So yeah, it's a Czech version of Last Judgment because uh, these six 
uh, Czech patron saints are part of it. Among them, uh, the most famous one is Saint Wenceslas. Um, he inspired this famous Christmas carol about good King Wenceslas that you can hear playing now. Pretty good. I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, have heard that one before. And um, uh, Saint Wenceslas is considered to be the main patron saint of not only Czech lands, but also the Czech state. But he's also the main patron saint of poor people like us guides. So if you want us to survive for a little longer and hold on to our most favored job, uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to that channel. It will help us a lot. Okay, uh, St. Wenceslas actually is buried inside of uh, St. Vitus Cathedral, right behind that wall. Also here we can see the presidential balcony, uh, which is the balcony that Czech president uses for announcing something important. So let's hear if he will say anything. I guess we can go. Let's have a look at the passage here. This is the passage that connects St. Vitus Cathedral with the old royal palace, the place where Czech kings used to live. This palace has many floors. The bottom ones are the oldest ones built in 12th century. And if we have a look in the corner of that building over there, we'll see a date, 1493. That's when the upper rooms of the palace were constructed. Just a year later, a not very famous guy called Christopher Columbus d decided to discover something and he discovered America. One thing that you didn't know, guys, is that America is actually smaller than Czech Republic. That's right. And Czech Republic is even bigger than Canada or Russia. <laughs> okay, it was a joke, guys. If you didn't get it, you're probably not Czech. It's Czech humor, all of that. The camera guy is laughing, you know why? Because he's Czech. He's, yeah, he's the most Czech person in this whole castle, probably. His name is Václav, actually. Václav is also the most, the most Czech name that you can imagine. Anyway, I'm going nuts already, so let's continue this way. Here we have the Basilica of St. George, one of the oldest buildings in the Prague Castle. It has been standing here since the year 920, it's a long time ago. At that time we were called Duchy of Bohemia and were ruled by the father of the great king uh, Wenceslas, who you know as the good king Wenceslas from the Christmas Carol that we mentioned earlier. Uh, behind the pink facade of that basilica you can see two towers. They're Romanesque towers, I'm sure you've seen this style, uh, maybe in Rome, uh, maybe a slightly bigger building. But right behind this basilica we have something called Golden Lane, so let's have a look at it. And we're here in the cutest part of the Prague castle. This is called the Golden Lane. Look around. We have a lot of tiny buildings here. And the history of Golden Lane is uh, very interesting. This is the place where the soldiers used to live. They actually uh, were asked to build their humble dwellings in the arches of the defense wall. So that's why they're so tiny, because they had to fit them inside. Um, but why is it called Golden Lane? Actually it comes from the tradition of goldsmiths uh, renting houses here. So the uh, longer version of the name would be Goldsmiths Lane, but it's too long. So we like to shorten it to just golden. People believe this is where alchemists used to live because uh, some of the alchemists' goals were to get gold yeah, from the mix of basic, uh, basic metals. Uh, but uh, we even have uh, a little recreation of the alchemist chamber here. And when you're guys in the Prague Castle, you can have a look at it. Uh, and this this house, number 22, is the house where Franz Kafka's sister used to live. I'm sure you guys heard of Franz Kafka, very famous writer who was born in Prague, lived here most of his life. <clears throat> Mm 
Nowadays, they have a bookstore. <laughs> the camera went crazy over over the bookstore. So yeah, so this is where uh, his sister lived and uh, he would visit her sometimes and uh, uh, water the plants and maybe write a couple of books there. So yeah, very famous house. Uh, but uh, that's it guys. Uh, this is where we'll finish our tour today. Thank you for watching. And um, if you are gonna be ever in Prague and would like to explore the Prague castle further, because we, as we said, uh, saw just a short version of our tour, uh, make sure to go through the link in our description and uh, book the tour with us. Thank you guys for watching and bye-bye.